if you want the ultimate fast Mustang, the obvious choice is the Shelby GT500. Powerful, loud, aggressive. It's the benchmark when it comes to pony cars. But there are a few drawbacks. It's only available in America and only available in left-hand drive, which for most people is a bit of a deal breaker. But there might be a solution. the CS850 GT from Clive Sutton. It's the UK's answer to the GT500. It's based on the UK Ford Mustang, which means it's right-hand drive. And that also means it's got a manual six-speed gearbox. But unlike the UK Ford Mustang, it's been supercharged quite a lot. This thing, and I can't quite believe I'm saying this, makes a staggering 859 metric horsepower. 859! Yes, this 115,000 pound beast provides almost double the power you get in the standard V8. That extra grunt comes from a custom tuned Whipple supercharger, intercooler, and a new exhaust that helps the engine extract a phenomenal 902 newton meters of torque. But what does that mean for performance? The simple answer is that it's ferocious. It accelerates like an absolutely mad thing. But I know that what you want to know is how ferocious is it? How quickly does a car with nearly 900 horsepower accelerate down a road? Well, I want to find out too. So with that, allow me to conduct an experiment. Acceleration timer on. Press OK to start. And send it. <laughs> I mean, it felt good. But the number on the screen says 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds, which is significantly slower than a GT500. But did you hear that noise? In fact, let me indulge a little bit in that supercharged V8 just to let you hear what this thing's like when it's at full chat. It's phenomenally loud. And I know that on YouTube, it can be quite difficult to get across a sense of a car's volume. And that's why I've set up a little experiment. This is my yellow Mustang. It's actually a Clive Sutton, a CS500. And it has a cat-back exhaust system. In other words, the exhaust runs from the catalytic converter back to single tips at the rear. And it sounds like this. Not bad, but it's nothing compared to the exhaust on the CS850 GT. It has long tube headers. It's all new, basically from the front to the back. And it has two modes, actually. It has a loud mode and a quiet mode. Plus you can control it via an app on your phone. Let me show you how it works. And before I do that, let me just grab a little bit of protection because, yeah, safety first, children. This is the quiet mode. Now let me show you loud mode. Shut it off. That is, I mean, that's quite frankly illegal. 
That, in case you're interested, is about as loud as standing next to a jet plane during takeoff. It's borderline dangerous without ear defenders, despite there being a strange loss of noise near the red line. But let's switch that off for a moment and take a closer look around. On the exterior, the CS850 GT is very much a Mustang, but has a more aggressive front end than you'll find on the standard GT. It has color adjustable tri bar LEDs you control using an app, a new bumper lip, new carbon fiber side skirts, and a new rear valance for their outrageous quad exhaust. Inside, again, more changes. It feels more special with a carbon fiber dashboard panel available in red, blue, yellow, or black, a really nice Sutton bespoke performance steering wheel, a custom shifter for the manual box, custom stitching, and Ford Racing Recaro seats, which have been upgraded by Sutton so they feature heating, cooling, and electric adjustment. It's a great cabin and a pretty tempting package. You can buy one off the shelf from Clive Sutton and customize it as you wish, or bring a Mustang you've already bought and they'll modify it for you. It all looks, especially in the case of this CS850 GT, like a compelling idea. But what's the reality like on the road? Actually, it's a very good idea. Now I know sending the best part of 900 horsepower to the rear wheels might sound like a bit of a death wish, but it's surprisingly controllable. Obviously you can't floor it in first or second gear, but once you get to third gear and you punch it, it's actually delivering a phenomenal amount of traction. It doesn't twitch around at all. down to the road. I was expecting this car to be, well, a bit of a death trap, but far from it. <laughs> Kudos to Clive Sutton. Actually, it does sort of make me wonder whether it really does have 859 horsepower, because the only thing that I can compare this to that I've ever driven is a Ferrari 812 Superfast which obviously has around 800 horsepower. And when you floor that, even in a straight line, it lights up the rear wheels and can snap on you when you're pretty much doing nothing. This thing doesn't do that. I'd love to get it on a dyno to see exactly how much power it makes. I'm not saying I want it to spin up and throw me into a hedge, but with that kind of horsepower figure, that's what I was expecting. The other thing worth remembering is that the GT500 doesn't come with a manual gearbox. This does, and it's a lovely box at that. They've given it this short shifter with a lovely action, and it just makes it so much more engaging to drive. In fact, that might make it worth the asking price alone. One of the coolest things is it's got that auto blip, so when you shift down, the revs rise, so you don't need to heel and toe. I mean, you can, <laughs> but it makes it a lot easier for you. The steering is pretty decent. It's not Porsche levels. It's not a proper sports car, this thing. But I have been living with a Mustang for the last, what, three years now, and I do like the way it steers. It's a little bit on the light side, but <laughs> there's not a lot of understeer. And even though there can be oversteer on demand, if that's what you want, the balance is lovely. I will say it doesn't steer quite as well as the GT500. This feels closer to a stock Mustang than the all singing, all dancing top dog, but it's still a lot of fun to thread down the road. Being completely objective, the GT500 feels like the more well-sorted sports car, quicker in a straight line, certainly from launch, more nimble through bends, and better calibrated. While I'm being objective, it sounds better too, not much quieter, but with a more pleasing tone. But having said all that, it's still hard not to be spellbound by this car. hilarious. If there was any word I could use to sum it up, that is it. It's a hilarious vehicle. I mean, the noise, the acceleration. <laughs> it just can't fail to put a smile on your face. It's good, old-fashioned American muscle. In fact, in a lot of ways, it's better than American muscle because, like I said, 
There is no American car with this unique blend of features. The GC500 doesn't have the manual box. It doesn't have as much power as this. It's just arguably not as engaging. It's just cool. It's gloriously, unapologetically silly. And I like that.